All right, guys, we got a massive freaking problem. Brought us another turbo. Remember that one's broke on the bottom and it's cracked? But they charged us for this second one. They can kiss my, I'm so sick of these. Let's try this again to see if this one is any better. So is it a casting error then? Well, at least we know this box wasn't dropped. Why are they grinding away at that? I mean, are you freaking serious? You think they pressure tested it? No. That's... I don't know what to say to that. I just, I just don't even know. Take it off and see what the other side looks like. I guess. Let's do it. Do they have the little piece of wax on it or something to mark? I mean, it. No, they got the wax on that, but that doesn't affect the cover. I really just don't know what to say to that. <laughs> hmm. What's the date on this one? This one is four of 22. This one was eight of 22. Now, don't so four months away from each other. I mean, obviously they knew something's up because this one's ground off too. They really want us just to go with it. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay, so from here, this one was not dropped, so we might have a new routine where, in order to buy a Garrett Turbo, you have to reuse your compressor housing. See this one? Not broke, not dropped, not damaged. Almost none of them are damaged. Okay, so we're gonna crack the cover off and look at the inside. Let's, I wanna see it. To me, that looks like a crack. I don't wanna put it on and take a chance that that is going through the other side. Let's just take a quick look and see. What does that say? Hmm. Two, 21, eight to something. Okay, where's the crack at? Right there. I mean, it's pretty thick casting right there, I guess. Hmm. Well, they know there's issues because they're grinding away on them. I don't see any cracks though. Even that, and that's rough. Oh yeah, that's... This all looks good. Yeah, you can like... That is... Gouges. The quality of Garrett going down. I mean, they have done some work inside of that. Looks like they go in from the inside. You can oh. see the inside scratched up. What do you want to say about that? So when you buy a turbo, don't. Uh, just don't put forget it on. to inspect it. Yeah, don't forget to take a look. See, this one looks freaking good. So what it looks like we're gonna to have to do is take off the compressor housing and put it on that. Put that housing on that turbo. Huh. I don't know what to tell you. Uh, you. Try to do right by buying a Garrett replacement. It's about the 
one of the most cost efficient versus uh, actual longevity, getting a good part. Used to be a good part. I don't know if it is anymore, but if they're letting stuff like that go and they're just expecting us to just not care, just go with it. Like I said, this is the second one. This is not the first one. And there's a pretty good freaking crack right down in there. Right there. Which is about right here. Oh, yeah. I think that's here, right? Right now, it's, it's, it's easy. It's simple to just change the housing. But when it's on the truck and there's oil all over this fancy freaking engine, then there's no coming back from it. You know, it'll just, it'll make it all, it'll just be oil all over the freaking place. Let's try to not do that. Damn it. This one's supposed to be returned tomorrow, but when we open up the second one, cracks. Mad crack right there. Another crack right there. We also have another crack right there, just like on the other turbo. Right there, there it is. There you go. Right there, you see that crack? That crack, pay attention where it's at, right here. Right? Then you look over here, and it's right there on the other side of that. I'm not sure that that won't leak oil. Since they're letting these cracks go, they're letting that crack go right there. They're letting that crack go right there. They're letting this stuff go by, quality control. What else are they letting go by? Garrett turbos used to be rock solid, good all the time. Now I have gotten two in a row that both show the same cracks. So where do we go from here? We go for one of the other aftermarket companies. Well, Garrett is actually there. They build more turbos than anybody probably on the planet combined. Okay, we could either put Frank's housing on here and run with this, or we put this cover back on here and we send both of them back and we don't even want Garrett turbos anymore until they get this figured out. What are your thoughts? Right now, I just don't know what to think. Actually, I'm sitting here needing a freaking turbo to bolt on the truck, and I, uh, I mean, if I don't feel good about it, sometimes it sucks paying attention. Okay, we got both turbos are not going on. We got them both sitting over there ready for the driver to pick up. We actually do not want either one of them. What a freaking drag. I mean, I've got some other stuff I can do. We're gonna put fan clutch on. Got the uh, fan ready to go over there. I mean, I can go ahead and finish most of this front, get a lot of that done, lower radiator hose, put the coolant pump pulley, fan clutch, fan stator. I can go ahead and get all that stuff buttoned up here. Actually, before we do that, let's go ahead and crack this open and make sure that it's the right one and I don't see any imperfection. The charge air cooler's messed up. I mean, the box looks old as a son of a gun. Let's cut it open. I mean, is this gonna be another one of them deals? Look at this, it, this does not look like factory sealed. It looks like it's already been opened. So let's just see. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. Damn, it's very dirty. Oh, it's a, hey, it's, a, it's an all aluminum one. Wow. Okay, well, I'm fairly excited about that. Let's get it out of the box. Fairly well packaged. Yeah, it, it is fairly well packaged. Hopefully these flanges are okay. So we got a lot of packaging on it. Hmm. It's the back side. If what? Two different units, like brand new from us. There's a big old crack right above them. Okay. Do you have any pictures of these you'd like to submit to? Oh, I got one even better. Do you want to record a video of it? I can send it to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Video, don't lie. When you see this video, this 
to me, and I have to kind of agree with the guy. I have worked for swamps. I've worked for fifth gear. I've worked for unlimited performance. I have built trucks until I'm blue in the face. And I kind of, when you see the video, you'll kind of agree with him too. It looks like cracks. It doesn't look like casting works. It looks like cracks. And to have two completely different turbos, two completely different deliveries to have the same problem, their package is pretty good, so it's kind of making me scratch my head. Brief message. I will call you as soon as I can. Thank you very much. Have a great day. I'm going to email like every contact that we have available to us. Somebody's going to get pissed and annoyed if you call me back. <laughs> I mean, we looked last night for a phone number for somebody to, for Garrett. I, I mean, you can't even find a phone number for him. I, I mean, on like we online. Emails and I'm going to email them. Kind of going to be a contraption to get it all set up to pressure test. What are you going to do it with air? Like a rubber? <laughs> yeah, no shit. Something. Yeah. And it's Friday today. Great. They've got the BD turbos. Uh, they've got a pretty good light switch effect, though. The BD turbo will, will kind of be smooth at low acceleration, and then if you try to hammer on it, it doesn't ramp up smoothly. It like goes from medium boost to full on balls of the wall, and it's it's a little unnerving on a, like a daily driver type of thing because it's hard to go mid range speed with a BD diesel. Now nah, maybe that's just this personal perception, personal opinion. Yeah. Okay, back over here to this fixable. If a hole gets rubbed in it, I imagine that the radiator shop probably could fix it. I like to put the two hoses on right here and have the clamps on, coolant wipe pipe and the lower radiator hose before putting this pulley on. That way the pulley is completely out of the way. I like the blue Loctite, the coolant pump pulley bolts. And then I only want to put the Loctite on when the alternator's on so that I can tighten these bolts with blue Loctite in it. I've had coolant pump pulleys come loose before. Okay, the call was made. We're putting the turbo back on. Could not pull it off, could not get a new turbo. So now I'm adding my power wire. See it right here? Going down and over. See right there? At the end, I kind of wanted it in everything. And then the other one goes down, goes over, and goes underneath the wiring there, which has a clear channel right there. There's really nothing there. Yeah, pretty much right there. Now, once we're done, I'll make sure it's not actually touching anything. So we go through that channel, follow this down, over, bam. We'll see how it works. I mean, hopefully I don't abandon it. So now let's get this turbo and now we can work on this exhaust. We honestly, we should be real freaking close. Cab down, we should be, but let's see. Okay, you get three guesses and you get nothing if you guess correctly. What causes that? Does anybody know? Go ahead, guess in the comments what causes that. Because we know what causes that. You might know. Okay, let's take a look at that wire that I put on. I actually took everything apart and I ran it underneath uh, the oil temp, oil pressure, and the VGT. It's down on the bottom and the wire is actually underneath. There you go. It's underneath everything. And it just comes out right here, right where I want it. That'll work. Turbo in the pipes on. Now put the 90 degree coolant hose. I'll go to the back here in a minute. Button up the front. Shoot, yeah. Okay, here we are. I've spent countless hours of my life trying to make crap freaking exhaust that don't freaking fit, fit. This was set right here, and if it is set right there, then it hits the transmission cross member. We really need to cut some off of this. Because if that's where it was, and it, with it right there, it touches. You can go back to previous video, and you can see that it was touching it. So now I'm like, okay, I need to cut this off just a little bit. I need to get a little more room so that I can raise this piece higher up. But then once I raise this higher up, it's going to mess that up. Honestly, when you, I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, uh, the only time exhaust can be put on that's freaking good is cab off. I'm sorry. Nothing ever has the hangers in the right. Just beat my head against the wall with it and see if we can't get it so I'm happy. That bolt right there, you can go back and put your foot on the tailpipe and test it. You touch it right there and the noise goes away, then you know it's it's exhaust. I mean, sometimes it'll feel like a torque converter or a flex plate, and it'll feel like all kinds of crap's going on with the truck. You got a strap on it trying to pull it back. Let's just see how bad it sucks. I need to clean that out in there. Clean the outside of that one and clean the inside of that, and then cut some off of here. This needed to be farther up. That's just all there was to it. One-handed. Two-handed works really good.
Imagine if we could get it to slide all the way up in there, but I think I want to cut it. Okay, I'm sitting here moaning and groaning and I'm half pissed off because I remember the countless hours I've spent on other freaking trucks trying to make this crap work. This shit sucks. It's freaking junk. Okay, now all of it's junk. And all of you that put your freaking shit on suck too because nobody knows how to put this son of a bitch so it do not hit the freaking cross member. And so, yeah, you can have your happy ass freaking exhaust, but why don't you do it after you get shit done or... or, or let's just see how long i screw with this before i actually get happy with it and then on the other side of that coin let's just see if i even get happy with it because that might not happen either you know maybe i'll just deal with this one and get this done but i am about to adhere to i don't give a damn what exhaust you had on your freaking truck if you want exhaust you're gonna have to buy new exhaust so before you go put exhaust on your truck, I just assume throw the freaking exhaust away and start with a fresh install right now. One that hasn't had the crimp lines and hasn't already been put together because back in the back where I need to take it apart, it's got U-bolts. You will not be able to separate that. And this is the curve part right here. So we need to twist that curve so that this goes a little bit further that way and up, we need it up a little bit. All right. Maybe I need a Snickers bar because I'm freaking hangry. Okay, it's like this is what I'm talking about. That's, I cut some off of that so that now we have that much room between the transmission cross member. had to go way up. But look at the hanger. See where that hanger is? See how it goes down, touches the exhaust, and look where it lines up. I like it from here. That's good. That's not. Tighten that one down. Now we're gonna take this pipe off and I'm gonna put a couple tack welds right here. I mean, that's good enough. Can't we just let the exhaust go there? That'd be fine. Okay, we got a phone call on the turbo. They're telling us to use it. And they're trying to go pull one that like was just built to see if it looks like that one. Them saying they're a casting line. I wanna see a new mold. Yeah, but this, they, 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 they gotta have a new mold. I forwarded you the emails. He's with the actual manufacturing. I mean, he's got the guy that manufactures it and makes them on the assembly line. Could you go pull the mold? Yeah, they're gonna have to label that on the actual packaging then. Hopefully they come up with something and, and maybe I'm, I'm not willing to even put myself in the position to have that turbo on the truck. You know what I mean? I mean, I could change the compressor housing very easily. I could just put his old housing back on. I mean, but if they come across with some good info, maybe I'll buy more in the future. You know, it wasn't about one before somebody I want one built yesterday. Okay, well, maybe. <laughs> you know what? If they do something like that and they send me one fresh off the press, I will put this truck on hold until it gets here. But that's the only damn way. I, I bet the date, the date on the box needs to say today. That would be Garrett shining like a son of a gun. If they want to do that and go ahead and send me one fresh off the press, I'll go ahead because, hell, I got this damn turret. I got everything on. <laughs> It's like a cab's about to go down, but if, if they do that, then I think that would look really good. It'd be a, be a good conversation. Oh, yeah, yeah, Frank would love that shit. Yeah, I don't know what they're going to do. They're still kicking it down the road. Uh, that's fine, yeah. I saw your email with the concern over the compressor housing crack. I saw your email, too, with the, uh, the explanation. Yeah, it's, it's really not a crack. It's a casting. They changed their casting. Well, tell me when. I, I, they need to quit grinding on it and let us see the raised material from the cast. Because yeah, this... I'm not sure where that grinding line came from. Ever, I pull one off the shelf, but it's not ground like that. It's got some scum parts and close to it, but it's not ground like that. So that, that caught my curiosity when I saw that, but that's the first one I've seen with someone actually... We saw two of them. Yeah, yeah, and both of the ones that I got uh, had those had those grind marks on it. and. You know, you have to admit, when somebody goes grinding on, on metal, a casting line disappears when you grind on it, a crack does not. So, and when those are ground on, and the casting line did not disappear when it's ground on. So I agree to disagree. <laughs> I, put, I put one of these turbos on two, uh, about a month and a half ago that I bought from the same channels that we have. And, and, and the date code was eight of, uh, and I, well, eight, it was the same time, 822. I got the box upstairs. 
And, and so that one did not spark my attention. I did not see it. So now who knows if that one maybe had the lines, but it's not ground on. I don't know, but I did not see it on that one. And then if you look around the housings, when you get these turbos back, you're gonna have to take a look at both of them. Somebody had their hands all over it. They were grinding around the outside perimeter of the, of the compressor housing. They were grinding on the outlet of the compressor housing. Somebody had their hands all over this freaking thing. And I think, I mean, okay, there needs to be a disclaimer in paper on the packaging. If they're gonna say this, they need to publicly say it. That way, when I tell the customer, and if this, I mean, I don't know, you probably ain't seen what we, I know you don't know what we do here, but if I have oil all over this truck, there is no amount of money or warranty you can give me to, you can't rectify the oil being on a fresh, clean engine. And I know you're just thinking about normal, nasty diesel engines. That's not what we do here. So if oil comes on the front of this truck, I am not willing, because you will not pay me enough money. There is not enough money that gonna have me mess this, make it all freaking nasty over something that sparked my attention to begin with. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's so, I mean, basically where we're at right now, let's make this thing, let's make this go. Let's maybe put a disclaimer somewhere, put a piece of paper in the turbo somewhere. Most companies will put something in there if there is cast, if there is something that is not an issue. Just like Ford, Ford says do not throw away cylinder heads because it's trash cracks in the valve seats. Now I, I wanna see that from Gary. I wanna see something that says because if this thing starts leaking oil, I'm not gonna change that turbo. Like I'm not gonna, I mean, it's, it's gonna be, well, uh, I mean, I just not. I mean, I, I, I would rather, I, I don't wanna gamble. I've gambled so many, I've been, we've been in business now uh, 15 years, okay? For 15 years, I've been putting these damn engines together. And, and putting these turbos on. And putting these turbos on. You can, I mean, I know nobody will, but for years, I'm online a lot. I'm on YouTube. I advocate a new drop-in replacement Garrett turbo. I have been pushing those for years. And the Power Max is another one. If somebody really wants something nice, we throw a Power Max on it. But I push Garrett factory replacements. We need to prove it a little more. Garrett, Garrett and Honeywell has way more money than anybody else, so they can do whatever kind of testing they can do, whatever they want. I don't have a clue, okay? I'm not a big company like that. I'm not gonna get egg on my face because I put an engine together with as much pride as I can, and then some little crack starts blowing crankcase gases out of it. Because, you know, there's gonna be crankcase gases coming through that. And so it's gonna leak oil out of it if it is a crack. And I get that you say that it's not a crack, but if you look further on that video that I have and you go to the end of the video, you'll see there are cracks inside the housing too. So inside of the second turbo that I got has cracks inside. So what, uh, I'm just curious, what, what, you're, what are you doing at this point? Uh, well, I'm trying to get this exhaust on. <laughs> you got a bag of blow exhaust on it, so. Now, are, you, are you putting that turbo on? Or no. No, I've already got, because I have his other turbo, his other turbo's on here. This guy shipped this truck to me from South Dakota. I'm in reserve. He shipped it to me to have it redone. My next truck's in North Carolina. It's, it's gonna come here. We've been doing it for 15 years. We've been bringing trucks in from all over the country and doing what we do. And, and then I'm gonna have, wind up with egg on my face and I'm gonna feel freaking guilty and I'm gonna wind up changing this turbo under warranty for free and you guys aren't gonna give me nothing. I've been here many times. I tried to warranty 03 Power Max back in the day. And, yeah, I mean, when it comes to a warranty issue with a turbo, it has to be a sheared shaft or you're not doing nothing for it. I've been there. I know that. So like a little oil leak on the front is not a warrantyable condition. You're, I mean, right now maybe because I'm causing all these scenes, but on a normal thing, if I would have called and said, hey, there's freaking cracks on this and it's leaking oil out, you guys would tell me to get bent. <laughs> I know that. I've been there. <laughs> I, I, yeah, so this is something where they need to figure out use all that money they got, figure out how to convince the customers that those are casting lines. That, that's all I'm saying. I will, I will. Yeah, my email is the person, so I will let them uh, know your, uh, your feelings on that point. I love, hey, I'll, I'll sell some Garrett turbos. Seriously, I'll sell Garrett, Garrett turbos like some go. Garrett does not take 100% of their housings. Like whoever is actually molding it does not use every single one of them. You know, there's a failure rate. Maybe if I had one, that was not ground on, was not touched, and all the casting is raised. Because you should feel the casting line, right? It should raise above, not below. I've been fed lines of stuff many times over the years, and I mean, Garrett's such a big, I mean, Honeywell, they're such a big company, they're, there's gotta be people there, they don't wanna just kick it down the, down the road, they wanna make it right, I know that. I know they don't wanna send out 
messed up crap. But I know they also don't want to go all the way back to April of 2022 and start replacing compressor housings on every turbo they're sold. I know they're not going to do that either. <laughs> so. What I did find interesting, and I appreciate this, um, when you said when the crankcase didn't get you coming and say, I get come out of crack and come through. We have so many customers that did not understand the crankcase ventilation system. And um, we get a lot of back for leaks. Oh, oh, yeah. You mean people people thinking that it's a it's a, a seal leak in the turbo and it's actually blow by because they got a crappy engine? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. This one. I want to let you know that. I appreciate that. I mean, this one right here. We do. We I have I have machine shop here, so we. I mean, this is a balanced ten over rebuild right here with fresh, uh, fresh stuff. And, and but you know, I mean, blow by it doesn't take much. You know, it's gonna be misty and. And uh, granted, you know, even if it is a crack like that, who knows, it probably could just be wet for a while, but, you know, uh, it's just, I don't know. I mean, it would be, I guess it'd be a different story if I was sitting here needing a turbo because he had a sheared shaft or something, but this guy was just going to upgrade. You know, he was going off of my word. I was like, oh, you want a new turbo? Shit, let's put a drop in gear to replace it. You can't go wrong with us. That's how I sell them. And I sell a shitload of them. I mean, I do push them. <laughs> Okay, that don't look half bad, right? Well, I, I am tied by where the bottom exhaust is at. All that exhaust down there, I'm tied to right there. Look how close it is. And so, anything that I change on here, if I change that, let's say I put it all back together like this and I put it like that, right? We run, it's gonna be rubbing on the cross mover down there with where it's at. Now, Let's say I raise it up where I want it to be, where I've got this welded for, this will go up. Like, if you look, it's separated at the top, not at the bottom, which means this whole thing needs to raise up, which means that needs to go up to actually connect to there. And once we do that, that cross member area is about that far. It's about that far away. It's enough you can move your whole hand out of there. Okay, let's just say that I do that and put this up where it needs to be, pull it up tight, it's gonna move this and I have to pull it forward a little bit just because of the angle, you, the hangers and the angle. Okay, so then we take this clamp off later in the future when if we have to replace the turbo. And then this is gonna be under such tension that that clamp, that the down pipe's gonna fall off and then we'll get the new turbo on and it is gonna be a pain in the butt to get it set back up. So I guess what I'm getting at is when you put your freaking exhaust on, you put the turbo on, we won't, well, when you put the downpipe should rest right there. It should want to be right there, not have to be pulled to it. It's pretty close down there too. Uh, pretty close, so close it's touching. It's pretty close. But it needs to rest, so we've got our work cut out for us. I'm not sure what we're gonna do. I mean, we're about to get the cut. We're about to cut it, start cutting start cutting and just make it be what it is well yeah let's let's took the clamp off and i tightened it right here it gives me something to hit i think this might be upside down i don't know maybe that i, I don't know because it's just i mean it needs to go up and that hanger right there is not going to allow it i put a ratchet strap on it right now to pull it back so that i the ratchet strap just holding it that way while I can hit this and try to get it that way. I'm trying to get that piece off. So, I mean, the only thing we're gonna be able to do is just start at the turbo and work our way back. And and uh, hope, hope somewhere we can get it to rest where it needs to be is what I'm going for. This is why I freaking, I, it's, I, don't, I just think we need new exhaust. If you wanna have aftermarket exhaust, you need new exhaust when it's cab off. Because I just, I don't want to just slap it on there and put it how it was, and then we're going to be grinding on the uh, cross member and making all kinds of racket. It's just it, it, our our the truck outside does that, and it's annoying as shit. I didn't put that exhaust on that truck. Okay, I've been laying under here beating the hell out of it, and I about got a hole knocked in one of it because it, it just I. If you want something nice, buy new exhaust. That's all there is to it. Okay, guys, we talked to Frank. And he is okay buying new exhaust for this. But I have an idea. 
Okay, now when I put this up on the downpipe, I mean, we might as well try first because, uh, I mean, if we trash this exhaust, or, I mean, I'd have to get it off the truck in order to get this stuff separated. I can't get these separated. I've almost put, I've dented it up right there. Oh, did I poke a hole in it? No, I didn't poke a hole in it yet, but I almost did. I was trying to get it off there. I put another little dimple right there. So what, what I'm thinking right now is maybe go ahead and hook up the downpipe onto the turbo and put this thing in whatever massive bind it's going to be in and get the top set. And then I'm kind of thinking I want to come back here with the rosebud. And while it's under mad tension, I want to heat it. Hope I don't know that I could get it completely red hot all the way around it. Maybe if I take the table down and I just just heat it up right here as hot as I can and hope that the tension that the pipe is under will bend it and make it form. What do you think? We could put a jack under it too if we want while I'm getting it hot. But the thing is I'm going to have to bend it twice. It's going to have to go up. I'll bend it and then it'll raise that way up. And then I'm going to have to heat it again and push it back down. It needs to go up and it's going to be angled like that. And I need to make one more turn to go straight. So there's two turns that I actually have to put in it. I don't know. I mean, I think even though he's game to buy exhaust, I mean, this is Magnaflow. It's, it's been on ever since he's owned the truck and it doesn't necessarily look, I mean, it doesn't look horrible. It's, uh, if we can get it, to fit, I mean, why not? I mean, because we'll drop five, seven hundred dollars on exhaust, you know, if we go ahead and buy exhaust. So I don't know. I'm going to ponder that at the end of the day and uh, we'll see what we come up with. Have a good night, guys.